guys, Shock Master fans. We're going to find out what absurd is all about. Let's check it out. And that's George Eastman. And he's running from what appears to be a priest. This is Katya Berger. She plays Katya. You may remember her from the movie Nana. More of your silly designs, Katya. Give it back now. Of course. She's got some sort of spinal condition. Why don't you read something instead? Back to uh, George Eastman and the priest. It looks like he's impaling himself on that fence. I guess he got away from the priest, but he's a little worse for wear. And now he's in the hospital. Completely absurd. Recuperative powers like that simply don't exist. Trivial to your skill, Doctor. I'd like to accept the compliment, Emily, but I can't. They don't expect him to pull through. I saw the blood on the gate. You know what I'm wondering? How did he manage to wound himself in that way? In the, woods? the priest was found wandering. Visiting a roaring metropolis on foot. Oh, no, I... I my automobile. It, it breaks down. Like the histological examinations and all the other tests. They indicate his blood is reproducing itself at triple the normal rate. Did you tell Dr. Kramer? And then he wakes up. They found the priest wandering around in the hospital, so they gotta question him now. Well. So you decided to come to the hospital to get your car fixed. Meanwhile, although they did sedate him for a little bit, he woke up again, and now he's taking it to the nurse. Drill style. And he's out. And he should also be present. He will convince you. Priest somehow knows that this guy's like superhuman or something, and apparently a serial killer. Bastanopolis is. How shall I put it? Immortal? Dark and blind, faith accepted, but it is so. His body can regenerate dead cells. Our killer found someone to attack. <laughs> Our next victim appears to be this guy whose motorcycle died on the highway. Hit and run. Of course, our killer recovers almost immediately, and then he kills the motorcyclist who actually is trying to help him. Back at the house, Katya's little brother Willie has a tantrum. All better now. I don't know how I figured that out, but yeah. How are the children? Has Emily shown up yet? No, not yet, ma'am. Well, you better hurry. Emily is not coming back until the next day. I think this is a sister of Katya and really. The actress Cindy Ledbetter plays Peggy and she's putting the dog out. And he 
Annie Bell plays the babysitter, Emily. You little brat. <laughs> Let's go see Katya now. The parents are attending a Super Bowl party with some friends. Super Bowls and spaghetti. Emily's actually just a nurse who's going to come over to check on Katya. But our nurse is going to find Peggy. You know where your parents have gone. I want you to run over to them. Hurry. It's dark outside. I don't know where the house is. It doesn't matter. Go outside. Yep, there's a killer around. And what you can do with the kid? Throw him out the door. You're on your head, own kid, go! So she goes in Katya's room. Katya's pretty useless. And the killer's trying to force his way in. Meanwhile, Willie found a way back in the house. Katya tries to scrape out. Killer's trying to stuff Emily into the stone. But Emily's a scrapper. She's putting up a fight. But she's starting to burn when he turns it on. over nothing. He ends up having to kill her with scissors. And I don't know how long she's been bedridden, but in spite of that, she actually can move fairly decently. So she has a compass in her hand. To the eyes. Now he's blind. So she turns on some music to mask the sound so she can get out of there without him hearing. And thus the slow speed chase down the hall. Now, she had ample opportunity to get away from him, but she always, for whatever reason, managed to stay pretty much within arm's length of him. And now she's paying for it. But then the priest showed up and caused a diversion. She was able to escape his grasp. And as luck would have it, she finds a big axe. To which she goes a-chopping. Everything's okay now. All right, let's talk about this movie called Absurd from 1981, uh, directed by Joe D'Amato, and again starring uh, George Eastman, also co-starring Annie Bell. You may remember her from the movie Forever Emmanuel. I remember her from that anyway. Also, Katya Berger played Katya, uh, the uh, child who was... Uh, in the bed for most of the movie, uh, with some sort of spinal thing going on. Um, you may remember her as Nana, uh, which came out in 1984, a few years after this one. Um, so, yeah, also the little kid, uh, Willie, uh, that's played by Katja Berger's real-life uh, little brother. So, anyway, 
That's the cast. The movie itself is uh, about uh, this guy, played by George Eastman, um, who was in Anthropophagus. This is kind of like a pseudo-sequel to Anthropophagus. I'll explain that later. But anyway, um, he is some sort of monster. Now, if you've ever seen the movie Silent Rage uh, with Chuck Norris, uh, it's kind of a movie like that, where the killer um, has some sort of recuperative power, and he's some sort of super monster being type thing. And, of course, he's a, suicide, or a murdering maniac. Um, that's what we have here. George Eastman is going around killing people, and he can't be stopped because if you try to shoot him, cut him, whatever, he uh, he come he, he heals instantly, and he's fine. So, and I don't know why he's murdering everybody, but he is. So that's what he's doing. He's kind of going around the countryside, just killing everybody he runs into. He gets into this house later on, where there's uh, Katya, her little brother, and um, this girl named Peggy, played by Cindy Ledbetter, who I have a movie in a movie called Cindy's Love Games, which I'll get to that at some point too, but. Anyway, I don't know if Cindy was related to the family or what, but she was kind of like a babysitter. But she was waiting for the babysitter, played by Annie Bell, um, played Emily. Uh, so she goes outside, she gets killed, and then the babysitter does show up. And then, of course, uh, George Eastman, our killer, shows up. And um, he uh, does kill Emily by stuff putting her in a stove, although she doesn't quite die. Um, she comes out later on, and they have a stabbing match, and uh, George Eastman wins that with a pair of scissors. Um, the little kid is running around whining and complaining constantly, and he's pounding on the door of his sister Katya. The door is locked. Now, Katya's in there on a bed. She's got some sort of spinal issue or something like that, and they have her strapped down tremendously. There's just all these belts and stuff all over her, so it takes her forever to get out of this thing. Now, again, I'm not sure why she's strapped down to begin with, because she finds a way to get out of that bed when she gets all that stuff off, and she can kind of walk. I mean, she's a little sluggish but she's able to walk and stuff so i don't know she seemed to be more or less fine now she managed to take a compass and stab him in the eyes so uh the killer is blind at this point and he's kind of like trying to find her uh listen for her so she turns on some music real loud but then she leaves um the killer kind of follows her as best he can but for whatever reason, Katya Berger kind of stays always within arm's reach of this guy, which is stupid. Because uh, eventually he does grab her and I hold her. And all of a sudden this priest shows up. This priest had been coming into town looking for uh, this killer. Um, that's his goal is to try to stop this guy. I don't know how he knows about him, but he does. Anyway, he's there and um, they get into a scuffle. Then Katya finds this axe and then she starts chopping away at him. And the last thing in the movie is she's holding up the boogeyman's head saying, you don't have to worry anymore. And she's a bloody mess and she's holding this severed head. That's our film. Now, uh, according to Wikipedia, they call this movie a spiritual sequel to Anthropophagus, which I reviewed yesterday. Um, what does that mean exactly? I don't really know. I mean, it's got the same director, the same actor, some similar themes, but it's not a sequel. It has nothing to do with it. At the end of that movie, the Anthropophagus, well, he was some sort of weird monster, uh, not like the creature in this movie. He's different. Plus, they look a little different. And he was on an island, and it's not the same movie. It's just not. It's not a sequel. Uh, so, but anyway, they're, they're similar themes. Uh, I guess that's why uh, Severn decided to put them in this uh, two-movie box set here uh, with uh, Anthropophagus. So, anyway, this box set, like I mentioned with Anthropophagus, is uh, very sought after. It's like $80 or something like that. It's ridiculous. You can buy these two uh, Blu-rays separately, and I don't know if there's anything different on this box set than the other one. Maybe somebody else can tell me. Now, Absurd also comes with a CD with some music, and i got to say, the soundtrack of this movie was fantastic. I really liked it. I don't know who did it. Um, I was thinking it might be Goblin, but I don't think it is, but I don't know. It just says original motion picture soundtrack. So, But it is. It's really good. It's one of the highlights of the movie. Pretty good soundtrack. So anyway, check this movie out, Absurd. I'll leave a link down below to the Blu-ray if you're looking for it on Amazon, and um, let me know what you think about it. Absurd, 1981. Watch it. Bye.